Your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, another cold day across central Illinois. A little bit of light snow has also been falling in a few spots. That's a roofing dog on it. Gibson Area Hospital camera. See those roads looking a little bit better out there. And the snow we had today, well, didn't really amount to a whole lot. But we've still got a little bit more that we may encounter. Another little wave is starting to move in here from the west. And over around the Springfield area, we're going to see additional snow showers as we go throughout tonight. Cold temperature still here. 17. Factor in the wind. It was like 5. Now, this is just the beginning of another system that is going to bring us some wintry weather for the weekend. We'll talk about that one. That could bring us more accumulating snow when we come back. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. The governor revealed his third budget proposal today, how the pandemic is impacting the state's spending. Plus, a man's accused of shooting his ex-girlfriend and holding her hostage, what he was charged with today. And also tonight, another mass vaccination site opened in central Illinois. What makes this one so unique? It doesn't matter what your address is. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. This will be one of the most challenging budgets this government has ever had to craft. Governor Pritzker delivered his third State of the State and Budget Address today. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The speech was pre-taped at the state fairgrounds with a new pop-up vaccine site in the backdrop. Our Capitol Bureau Chief, Mark Maxwell, is live in Springfield tonight with details and reaction. Mark, so how did the governor describe the State of the State? Jennifer, Governor Pritzker said the state of the state is generous, heroic, and strong, but his budget address said that Illinois desperately needs help from the federal government. Illinois has already borrowed billions of dollars from Congress to help pay for coronavirus expenses. And now, if Illinois gets an estimated $7 billion in a new round of COVID-19 relief, the governor says that money should go to paying down debt and unpaid bills. He also made the case that Illinois, more than most states around us, deserve help from the feds. For decades, Illinois has been forced to send billions more tax dollars every year to the federal government than we receive back from them in support of our citizens. Federal spending is rigged against Illinois. So far, not a single Republican congressman from Illinois has supported you getting back what you paid for. If not in a national crisis, when will they stand up for us? Pritzker said any leftover federal funding that does not go to debt or unpaid bills should go to grow jobs and the economy. But therein lies the rub. Republicans already pushing back against a big part of what would balance Pritzker's budget, wiping out nearly a billion dollars in tax breaks for businesses that were designed to grow jobs and the economy. Or, uh, those business groups and Republicans arguing that would kill jobs at a time when we need them most. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Mark, thanks so much. A few more details on this. The governor's total budget plan comes in at $41.6 billion. It makes the state's full pension payment, freezes education funding in place, cuts health care funding by 8%, and cuts government services by 3.8%. The Departments of Human Services, Employment Services, and Children and Family Services would all see an increase in money. The reaction from lawmakers to the governor's speech was mixed, and the same can be said for the public. Our WCI3's Cole Henke live in Springfield. Cole, you went out to get the pulse of the people. What were you hearing? Well, most uh, everybody I talked to had similar priorities, and most of them revolved around the state's recovery from COVID. Now, Governor Pritzker promised a better future during his State of the State address. But some found it difficult to trust the state's ability to efficiently make that future a reality. The governor also promised no new tax increases during the next year following the failure of his progressive income tax. But some I talked to are waiting to see it, to believe it. You know, they're just sneaking in other ways. They say you're not going to have an, a raised income tax, but then they'll increase your gas tax or something else question um i want to be able to trust the state but i honestly don't feel like i do because um as you know in this state we've had so much corruption in our political um arena there were some i spoke with today that were on the governor's side saying they thought he handled the covid pandemic the best way he could but he, he was dealt a rough hand 
The governor's budget proposal would also send more money to the Illinois Department of Employment Security in order to help people get their unemployment benefits quicker. That's something that's obviously plagued the state since the beginning of the pandemic. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Cole Hankey, WCIA3, your local news leader. Cole, thank you. In other news, state police are investigating after a man from Decatur died in the custody of the Peoria County Sheriff's Office. The sheriff says Michael Dyer died by suicide Saturday morning. He was facing murder charges for the death of Jeffrey Blevins. Officials say Dyer hadn't shown any signs of mental distress since being held in jail on January 26th. A man accused of trying to kill his ex-girlfriend was in court today. We told you about him over the weekend. Lamont Jackson was arrested Saturday morning. Police say he'd broken into his ex's home Friday night and refused to let her leave. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting joins us now. Courtney, you were in court for the arraignment. Tell us more about what happened there. Well, Paul, investigators say this started with a fight over Jackson's kids, and now he's facing charges ranging from attempted first-degree murder to illegal possession of a firearm by a felon. Now, investigators say that his charges detail him breaking into her home, and the two of them, him and his ex-girlfriend, have two children together, but they live separately. His charges say he wanted the kids, but his ex wouldn't let him take them. On Friday, he found out the kids were with someone else, and that's when he broke into his ex's house, threatened her, hit her with a gun and eventually shot at her, hitting her once in the leg. I talked to state's attorney Julia Reitz about this case. She says domestic violence has become a growing problem in the past few months. Thankfully, she was able to um, contact a friend and get the police involved, um, and we were able to take him into custody so that we can uh, move forward and hopefully hold him responsible for his actions and keep her and her, ch and her children, most importantly, safe. In addition to domestic violence, Reed says gun violence is another crime on the rise recently over the past few months. Luckily, the two children were not with Jackson at the time. He will be back in court next month. He's facing charges that could put him behind bars for the rest of his life. Reed says he has a long criminal history dating back to 1991. Some of those are other domestic battery charges, including one where he hit a child family member. Live in the newsroom, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Awful situation. Courtney, thanks for that update. A police squad car crashed into a McDonald's in Peoria this morning. Police say the officer lost control of a car and hit the front of the restaurant. The officer was hurt and taken to the hospital. He will recover. Police say no one in the restaurant was hurt, but the building you can see right there was heavily damaged. Four people are without a home in Springfield after a fire forced them out this morning. It happened near the corner of South English and West Lawrence Avenues. No one was hurt. When crews got there, they found a fire on the top two floors of the home. The cause is under investigation. A new vaccination site opened in Springfield today. It was the backdrop of the governor's state of the state. Now the clinic at the Orr building on the state fairgrounds is run by the National Guard and the Sangamon County uh, Department of Public Health. They're getting a 4,000 doses of the vaccine every week. People can set up an appointment there no matter where they're from. And you can set up an appointment using the state's website. And here's a quick look at today's COVID numbers statewide. There are nearly 1,800 new infections. 24 more people have died since yesterday. That includes two from central Illinois. The seven day positivity rate is 3.4%. Some U of I students are making sure their peers have food on the table. How you can help them reach their goal. Plus, natural gas shortages are leading to utility bill spikes where there's help available if you're struggling.